Welcome back to my channel. Today I have an exciting video, video for you. I'm going to do a two gel plate technique or several variations of that using Dollar Tree mark makers. So here are my two 8x10 gel plates. And I'm going to be using mark makers that you can get from the dollar store. These are both shelf liners. I've cut some of them to the size of the plate. These are sink liners. It's got waves and, and you can use both sides. This is another sink liner. And then we have these seasonal placemats. And I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about them. But I'm going to use all six of these mark makers with these two plates. Now, first off, I'm going to make some base coat prints. I'm going to coat some papers with various colors and I'm just applying one or two colors to the plate and doing one or two pulls to get. Now I don't care if this is not perfect coverage. My goal here is to A, use up some paint that I've had for multiple years that I want to stop storing and get rid of and just get some base prints. I'm mixing colors and I want to get a good selection of every color of the rainbow. That's my goal. And I'm not going to be showing all of this. At some point in time, I actually start doing base coat prints with both plates. And I'm just showing you a little bit of this so you get the process. Now, what I did is I sat down and I base coated with color a whole slew of papers so that I have them. I have not, will not use all those papers in the finished gel prints. I, I will be adding to it using the two gel plate techniques and these mark makers as well as other mark makers down the road. But I did it all in one session, let them dry overnight and then proceed it with the rest of the video the next day. Now, just a word about gel print videos. They're really difficult to video and to edit because typically there's a lot of footage. So I've shrunk that down. I've sped up in some parts, but I want to give you kind of the key points. And so I'm going to be covering four main ways that we can use two gel plates to make sure that you're not wasting anything and getting a multitude of prints out of your gel plate session. So I'm just going through the rainbow, getting some base coat down. I want green, yellows, orange, reds, and I like mixing one or two colors just so I have some variation. Doing ombres as well gives some interesting backgrounds to your prints. Now I use my gel prints mainly for collage. I do rip a strip or I do um, collage the focal image using my gel prints, or I use them as instant backgrounds to quickly jumpstart the art journal process. I left this footage in again because I want you to see different color combinations that I'm doing. And here I'm using, doing the base coat, having two prints together. And there is the selection of prints and colors. I love all the gr grungy bits that show up and the imperfections. That's what really makes them super, super interesting. Quinacridone magenta and aqua make a nice violet color. using some metallics as well, using up whatever.
So now we're going to start the two, the two gel plate process, the techniques. So I'm putting a coat of paint on the gel plate on the right hand side. This is a purple, diazosine purple, and I'm adding some magenta to this. And you want to put a generous amount of paint on here, maybe a little wetter than what you would normally do for just a regular print. Now you could put one color here or multiple colors. You're only limited by your imagination. <clears throat> when you get to the end of the tube, don't forget to cut it open and there's so much paint in there. So you want to move fairly quickly and make sure that this there's a lot of paint and it stays fairly wet. Now you're going to grab one of the mark maker tools. So I'm going to grab this shelf liner to start. And I'm going to press it into the paint on that gel plate. Then I'm going to lift it and very quickly place it on the other gel plate and make an imprint on that plate. Then I'm going to pull the paint off the first gel plate. I often use a brayer to make sure I get good contact. And here you can see the imprint from the mark maker. Now this can be a finished print or this could be another base coat that we are going to add more layers onto. I have that whole stash of first layers off to the side and as I go I'm going to be looking through that and grabbing them. Now I want to add more imprints on the gel plate on the left hand side. Now that is drying. The imprints on there need to dry before I'm going to do, do a pull-off print. So here I'm using Bright Aqua and I'm just picking colors that I think are going to go well. Things that I've learned as I create and I'm going to apply it. But this is the time to experiment. Worst case scenario, it doesn't look good. You pull and put another print on top of it. So here I'm going to grab this sink liner with the waves and I'm going to push it into the paint, lift it up very quickly, press it down onto the second gel plate. I'm going to pull this print. Now some of my prints I want to keep relatively simple. This might be the final print that I'm going to use to make, use as collage, ripped up collage. Now we have another layer of pattern on this plate. Now we have some crusty bits, things that got left over on this plate. So every once in a while, you're going to want to add paint and do a pull off print. When you do that is totally up to you. But those crusty bits are what makes these gel prints really one of a kind and add so much interest to them. And that's something you really can't get any other way. So I like the grunginess. Now there will be, I do film all, not all, but most of the finished prints you'll see at the end of the video. Most of the rest of the video I've sped up considerably. Look at all those crusty bits. Just adds so much interest. but you can still see that there's lots left on the plate. This is turquoise. This 
stamping onto the gel plate and then lifting it with a pull-off print is a great technique. And But if you're impatient like I am and have to wait, this doing the two plates is great for that. So here I've added a third layer on the gel print plate on the, on the left and I'm just pulling another print. Sometimes it comes all off, sometimes it leaves lots down below. There's a certain amount of luck variation. Love the look of that. You've got multi-layered, multi-patterned. So I'm just going to move this out of the way and we look at all the pattern that is on there. So now we want to lift this, all that goodness, off of this plate. And in order to do that, we need to put a coat of paint on it. Now you can use white, you can use, other people use unbleached titanium, I prefer white, or you can use another color. Sometimes it doesn't quite work the way you want. It's kind of trial and error, and I really haven't figured anything out. But the best way to get them off is using white because all those colors that you've been put on there are going to show. But you're going to see me use other colors as well with varying degrees of success. But again, it's all about experimenting. Gel plate sessions are all about fun and exploring color and pattern. taking a peek to see if it's coming up, lifting. I want to get most of it lifting up. And there you have it. All the stamping that we did from the th three different mark makers right there, multi-layered. So we made one, two, three, four, five different gel prints all together with nothing wasted. So here I'm using, doing that again, and I'm stamping on the gel plate on the left, using the various mark makers differently, turning them to get the waves going differently with this one. Love the combination. You've got those crusty bits on there. Now, there are some footage that is missing. I had to edit out some of it, but I wanted to show you some key things. I wanted to give you ideas, color combinations, and ways to use these mark makers. I love blue and green on a gel plate. I love using this yellow there is Naples yellow. This is Artist Loft, it's lighter. I prefer the Liquitex Basics. It's a little more yellow. So this is a sink liner with these flowers and I love, love, love using it. I love the pattern that it gives. So I'm continuing on We're using the two, putting paints on the gel plate on the right, a generous amount, press the mark maker in, lift the print, take that mark maker and stamp on the gel plate on the left and build up several patterns. And when you're ready, put a coat of paint and lift, take a cleanup print. So here I'm taking the shelf liner and taking it and stamping it directly onto the paper. And you can do that as well. 
and in a little bit we're going to do that on top of that second gel plate and it i just find you get a better print when you put that sheet of paper the with the base coat on it oh yes look at that look at all that goodness that's naples yellow and green and naples yellow and orange and naples yellow and magenta always looks great so here i've built up all the stamping on the gel plate and i'm putting quinacridone magenta on top to take now i'm going to do a cleanup print and as you can see a lot of those that goodness is not coming up so i'm pressing harder and then i'm pulling it look at all that grungy goodness and there's still lots on the plate that's going to come off now so i'm doing a second cleanup pull and this time i'm putting naples yellow if you haven't used naples yellow give it a try it's one of my favorite colors it goes and blends with every color look at this yum complete insta background As I said, this is the Artist Loft Naples Yellow. I prefer the Liquitex Basics one. It's just a nicer, deeper color. But I wanted to use this one up. And after today, it's done. So there I'm putting the paper on top of the gel plate. And because it's spongy, you're getting a good print. Here, instead of putting the whole sheet on, I'm just stamping with portions of it. And that's giving some randomness. As you go through a gel plate session, I find I get a lot more creative. And I'm picking different uh, different ones of the mark makers, layering it up. So that's the third way. where you're stamping with the mark make the paint on the mark maker directly onto a paper that already has some paint on it some layers now here i've have some of those mark makers remember i cut them to size but they some of them were fairly big so i've got little pieces that i use in my art journal and i'm using them here in the same way just littler pieces for ease So right now I'm really almost using the gel plate on the right as a stamp pad where the color is on it and I'm just transferring the paint with the mark makers. And when you're ready, you can pull off the paint. Since there's greebly bits there, I'm going to get this wavy one, put this on, yum. And then I'm going to pull the print. Nothing goes to waste. So much goodness. Here I'm using the magenta and, and part of the decision was because I have this cut open tube of paint and my goal is to use it up. And I'm going to pull the crusty bits off of both of these. Not a lot's coming off, but you know what? That leaves some on the plate. That just means I got to pull it, get something else off. 
Now this is a placemat, a seasonal placemat from the from the dollar store. I think it was Dollar Tree and it was this year. And it has two sides. One is kind of rounded, the other side is flat. And they're going to give different marks. So here I'm putting paint on it, putting the mark maker on the plate, and then I'm going to lift the mark maker off and put it right onto the paper. And look at that wonderful patterning. Now you, it's really important that you have lots of paint on that plate on the right. If you don't, it, you're not going to get much of a transfer. And as I'm experimenting here, the, I've dis, I'm going to be discovering the last way. So again, lots of paint on there. Put the mark maker, this case a placemat, grab a paper that with base paint on it, move the mark maker on, use the brayer to press, get good contact and good transfer, and voila. If you like the print, you can put it in the done pile. If you don't like the print yet, you can add more things. I love how some of the white shows through here. You're getting positive and negative. And look at all the effects, same mark maker. I love those marks. I think that'll look nice on some collage papers that I use for leaves or some flowers. You can see how wet the paint is. I'm going to put this, the, or, the red onto blue because I think that's going to contrast really nicely. Get good contact and then transfer it, press down with the brayer. Love that blue and red combo. That's definitely something I need to do again. And then I'm pulling off that right hand gel plate. And then again, we have the positive and negative. Teal and red go really well. They're gonna, that red is, should really shine, which is my thinking. And I'm just doing a clean off print here. And look at that. Yellow Oxide is another winning color. It goes well with reds, it goes well with teal, orange. Now, as much as I'm doing with this placemat, I could be using any of those mark makers and you're gonna see me use more of them coming up. But you can just do one and do lots of color combinations and lots of start experimenting and get creative. Lots of greebly bits left over. I find when I go really fast in this process, I get more creative because you're not thinking, you're just going very intuitively. I did find when I talked about the placemat, I talked about how one side was rounded and one side's more flat. The flat side gives a thicker line transfer there. And that's what I'm showing you. So wetter, the, you keep lots of paint, the wetter paint gives a transfer, but also the flat side of those plas, pla, placemats work better. And I'm putting the blue on 
this one. I didn't get much of a transfer, but I'm liking the blue on that ombre background. So I'm adding more paint, putting the mark maker back on, brayer, get good contact, put it back on the gel plate and press. And oh, I love that. There I had more paint, so I brayered it onto the thing. And here I decided, what happens if I brayer the paint directly onto the mark maker and then put the paper on top? And that's number four in the two gel plate technique, where you brayer the paint right onto the mark maker. And you're gonna see me doing lots of this with the different mark makers. And you can use one color like I'm doing, or you can put multiple colors on here if you want to get creative. I just kept it simple. Then grab one of those background papers and press in. Here I've chose something orange-red because that teal aqua is going to show up really, really well. So if you're not sure what's going to show up well, use your color wheel. Things across from each other are really going to have show up well. They're going to look good. Now here I'm adding a little more paint and pulling some more for some blank areas. Which is giving me ideas for something I'm going to do in a bit. And that's what I mean. The more you go, the more you figure out things and start doing things, which is why it's difficult to do gel print videos because I can start one thing, but I tend to get distracted and go my own way. So here I'm just braying it on and it's sitting on that second gel plate that's spongy. And I'm, this is on the flat side. And then I'm taking background sheet, the base color, pressing it on and pulling. And you can see how what good coverage you get and good marking. And then I'm adding a bit on the blank spaces. Now I could be using the same color paint, so I'm using the one gel plate as basically to brayer off. If you don't have two plates, you can just do this on a your craft mat I like having different prints with different colors so blue with red and blue with orange and blue with yellow and blue with green so here's the other uh, placemat and I've already I've taken some out of it I was making a stamp out of it and here I'm just braying on the color Again, on the flat side, because I've discovered that I like that look better. But try both sides and see which one you like. And then pressing the paper on it. And I love that look. Yum. Aqua, bright aqua and purple. Winning color combo. Add more. I'm grabbing another background paper that I think is going to go good with this. And here I'm just pressing little bits, getting more coverage where I want. And getting some randomness in here. And I really love this part. Using one as the, to brayer off the paint and the other one just to rest the mark maker on. Switching colors, I just put a piece of paper and lift off the excess color. And now I'm putting some quinacridone magenta on that Easter egg placemat. And this was gifted to me from my sister-in-law. So thank you, Julie. Now here's a gorgeous background print. And I'm just pressing on there getting all over coverage and the colors change that's that Naples yellow it just does magic yum 
yum. I love, 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 love that look. Adding more Kodakrodo magenta. And I'm grabbing this print and then I decide I'm just putting it in some areas. I'm not getting a full on transfer. And that's what you can do. You can do kind of a randomness. By pressing in different places and I'm getting all that grunge look at this this is really shaping up and I am NOT gonna lie this one this print right here my favorite I love it so much here's that Naples yellow adding a little bit of that on my mark maker and then I'm going to touch it on and add a little bit of that Naples yellow We've got aqua, we've got the violet, we've got the conacridone magenta. It's 100% grunge and OMG. Just adding a little bit more. And look at that. Layer upon layer upon layer of grungy goodness. There's an Insta background if I ever saw one. And as lovely as that one was, this one is not so interesting. So I'm speeding up the video and I'm here I'm working with some of the other mark makers, adding color onto orange. That aqua goes good or vice versa. Those colors really pop. Yellow on blue, blue on yellow. And I'm just going through the mark makers, adding paint, bearing on paint, pressing it in. I'm not even covering the entire mark maker. Just adding extra bits, building those backgrounds, building those collage sheets. Little bits. I'm just switching it up as I go. One color, several different prints. Grab different backgrounds. I like the idea of having so many um, base coated sheets because I can do another session and I will go in a totally different tangent. Whereas here I might have gone one way, the next day something else is in my head. Here I'm adding white and black, and I love that contrast that that gives, or dark blue on this, on the yellows. This shelf liner, really easily accessible and adds so much interest. It's a very fine print. So I'm adding white and then just adding that to whatever gel print. It's just another layer. And some of these will go into my stash and they'll be as they are. When I take them out, if they're not an Insta background, I can add stamping and stenciling at a later point too.
So now that I added purple here, I'm adding, thinking, okay, what other one could use purple? This one looked very Easter egg-ish like. So I'm adding purple and there's the yellow and the aqua. Here I'm just cleaning up the plate, getting rid of excess paint. Another favorite of mine. And I thought, what happens if I add some metallic here? You put some shimmer on some of these, because you know I love my shimmer. And bronze looks so good with the aqua. Doing it this way, I would just do one color and go through different sheets that I want to add yellow to. Then I might do orange and add the orange and add then a ne the next color and next color. So you're not switching colors constantly. I'm switching a little more than I would if I wasn't videotaping, but I want to give you some variations, some ideas. Mm, love that. I have a playlist using gel prints, creating gel prints and using them as well as using collage papers. If you want to see what I use these papers for, check out those playlists. Here I'm adding black. to a variety of them. And that black or white adding that contrast always just makes that page, it just bumps it up. Here I'm adding the wavy one, turning the page, just making some interesting patterns on the gel print. Cleaning up some paint. Gonna add some white waves. And like I said, some of my gel prints are very simple. Not a lot of patterns, some have a lot more. I like having that variation in my stash and I can find the perfect piece for anything. There I've added black, now I've added, I'm adding white. And I love that the imperfection, not getting perfect coverage, is what makes these gel prints. Here, this one just bumped it up. This was a not a nice looking gel print, but adding that white, those white waves just totally knocked it up. So now I'm gonna show you the finished products. These are some of my favorites. Look at that. Nice grunge with the black. That one's fairly simple. Black and white added. More. Here we have a multitude of those, those uh, mark makers being used. There's one of my favorites. Oh, love that one. Another one. That aqua on the orange background. The navy on the orange background. The back, the imperfection of it. 
Can't wait to use this in my art journal or make an art journal with it. I'll put a link to some mark making tools that I've found in the Amazon store, but check out your dollar store. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to click on the bell and select the option to be notified of upcoming videos. Follow me on Instagram at Creative Katie. Do you have a favorite mark making tool? Tell me all about it in the comment section below. Oh, yum. I love that one. Love this one. This one too. The bronze with the black. these will be going into my big blue block box filing system and I still have probably another 50 sheets that are have a base coat on them love that one Thanks again for watching. Now go get creative.